Your eye contact may be weak. Your handshake may be limp. You may exhibit nervous behaviors such as fidgeting and displaying facial tics or lacking facial expressions. Hey guys, Recruiter Preston here. Welcome to another video. So today we're gonna to be talking about all the things that recruiters don't tell you. All of our videos are generally about things that recruiters will clue you in on or keep you informed on. And for a large part, they do that. It's pretty important to keep your candidates up to date and clued in on what their process is gonna be like. But just like life, there are times when it's better to stay quiet and not share everything. We're all guilty at times keeping things from clients and new talent. And these ones are the ones that I find most common in our industry. Often they're also just fairly harmless or in the interest of not hurting people's feelings, but sometimes they're needed to protect the company or to stop potential problems from snowballing into larger ones. So before we get started, please support a fellow recruiter, give us a like, subscribe, click that bell, really, really means a lot. So while recruiters may appear intimidating, they have the best interests of both candidates and the company in mind, especially if you're on the agency side. They strive to really provide a positive experience throughout the application and interview process. However, there are certain confidential pieces of information such as salary ranges and competition among candidates and internal HR strategies that recruiters just honestly cannot disclose. Here are some of the secrets that recruiters may keep to themselves, although in some cases, like our first one might want potential hires and even clients to know. Drop the buzzwords, please. In order to make a resume stand out, it is advisable to incorporate relevant keywords and exhibit a deep understanding of your field. However, it is also important to remember that authenticity is key. Omar Molat, the CEO and founder of Vervo, advises against attempting to appear more knowledgeable than you actually are. Recruiters and employers are more interested in your personality and genuine passion for your work rather than your ability to use buzzwords like synergy, move the needle, ROI and feed the funnel. According to the well-known employer Academy Sports and Outdoors, it is not only about specific responses that candidates provide during an interview, but rather about their level of enthusiasm and genuine passion for their profession. Such a display of passion is what sets exceptional candidates apart from the rest. Therefore, it is crucial to remain true to oneself and express a sincere passion for one's work in order to make a lasting impression on potential employers. They hired internally. It is possible that companies may have already identified a suitable candidate for a particular position before inviting other candidates for an interview, especially external ones. This could be due to a number of reasons, such as the company's desire to promote an internal employee who has been groomed for the role, or someone who's already familiar with the company's culture and business operations. However, this does not necessarily mean the company ruled out the possibility of hiring external candidates. They may still request to interview you to get a better sense of your skills and experience, and also to explore the possibility of a future job opening. In other words, even if you're not selected for the current position, the company may still consider you for other roles that become available in the future. It is really important to remember that the hiring process is not always straightforward, and there may be factors at play that are beyond your control. Nonetheless, it is always a good idea to put your best foot forward during the interview process and really leave a last impression of the hiring managers as this could really improve your chances of being considered for future job openings. Interview bloopers. Here are 10 potential issues that may arise during a job interview. Your choice of attire may be outdated, unkempt, ill-fitting, revealing, or ostentatious. Your physical appearance may be appeared disheveled, messy, outdated, unkempt, malodorous, or overwhelming, perhaps due to the excessive use of perfume or cologne. Your eye contact may be weak, shifty, or overly intense. Your handshake may be limp, overly firm, or clammy. You may use filler words such as ah, or um, or like too frequently. Your responses to interview questions may be excessively long-winded, riddled with grammatical errors, or even contain inappropriate language, such as swearing. You may come across as overly confident, aggressive, self-absorbed, insecure, detached, scatterbrained, or desperate. Your speech may be too fast, too slow, loud or soft. You may exhibit nervous behaviors such as giggling and fidgeting and displaying facial tics or lacking facial expressions. You may lack sincerity, self-assurance, clarity, or conviction in your responses. They're just not that into you. The first impression that you make on a potential employer can significantly impact your chances of being selected for the next round of interviews or being offered a job. If you fail to make a good first impression, it may be challenging to recover and you may need to be exceptionally impressive 
during the interview to compensate for it. Employers often consider not only your skills and qualifications, but also your personality and how well you fit into the company culture. Therefore, it's really important to demonstrate your likability and ability to work well with others. When answering questions during an interview, try to really showcase your personality and interests instead of solely focusing on being professional and serious. Building rapport with your interviewer and showing your authentic self can really go a long way in making you a desirable candidate. Reference your references. When you're going to the job application process, it is possible that a potential employer may ask you for references. To prepare for this, it is a really good idea to have a list of references ready and ensure that they are aware that they may be contacted to talk about your work. It's really important to know what your references will say about you, so make sure you pick the best references you can. Before giving their contact information to recruiters, it may be a good idea to speak with them to ensure that you are on the same page and that they are willing to provide a reference positive one. Recruiters may be well connected in your particular field and they may even reach out through networking sites like LinkedIn to people you work with at your current office. However, while you may have glowing official references, your current coworkers may not feel the same about your work. So it is really essential to always put your best foot forward in your office regardless of whether you plan to use a person as a reference or not. Really by doing so, you may be surprised at how this extra effort could help you land a new job at a new company. When providing references, it is absolutely important to ensure that they can talk in detail about how you've exceeded expectations as this is what recruiters and hiring managers are really looking for. If they have doubts about you, they may not inform you or let you know and negative references could confirm their doubts. Additionally, a hiring manager may reach out to someone you both know to get informal references without asking you about it first. If these references are negative, it could be the reason that you do not receive an offer or move forward to the next interview round. So really make sure that your references are reliable and will speak positively about you to increase their chances of getting the job. They were waiting on someone else. The job search process can be long and arduous, filled with anxiety and uncertainty. Once you have gone through the interview process, you may feel relieved that it's over, but the waiting game can also begin to take a mental toll on your emotional state. You start to wonder when you will hear back from the recruiter or hiring manager about the status of your application. It's not uncommon to feel like you're being left in the dark with no information about what's going on behind the scenes. This could be particularly challenging if you felt that the interview process went really well and you're eager to hear the outcome. But unfortunately, the reality is that the company may have other candidates in mind and you may not be their first choice. While it may not be the news that you were hoping for, being the second choice is not necessarily a bad position to be in. It means that the company saw potential in you and your skill set, and you made it far enough in the application process to seriously be considered. That also means that they may be keeping you in mind in case the first choice doesn't work out or declines the job offer. Companies may choose to wait to make a final decision until they hear back from their first choice candidate. This can take some time as they may be weighing different factors or options, really waiting for the top candidate to make a decision. In this situation, it's really important to be patient and understanding that there may be factors beyond your control that are causing the delay. While waiting, it could be helpful to continue your job search and apply for other positions. You don't want to put all your eggs in just one basket and miss out on other opportunities. Additionally, it's also okay to reach out to the recruiter or hiring manager for an update on the hiring process. This really shows that you're still interested in the position and that you're proactive in the follow-up. Your social media is a massive waving red flag. In today's digital digital age, it's important to have a professional and polished online presence as it can really impact your job search success. According to recent studies, approximately 80% of recruiters and hiring managers really utilize social media platforms to research and evaluate potential job candidates. Therefore, it's really crucial to ensure that your online image aligns with the professional image you're trying to present to potential employers. Hiring managers use social media to gain insights into a candidate's background and personal brand, while also looking for any potential red flags. However, it's important to note that these hiring professionals are not using social media to find a way to disqualify qualified candidates, rather they're searching for accurate representation of the candidate and ensuring that their online presence is consistent with their application materials. Recruiters and employment experts alike, they really suggest that candidates should ensure that their social media accounts, whether it be LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, complement the information provided on their resume, cover letter, and other job application materials. Inconsistencies between these documents and social media accounts can cause distrust and raise red flags for hiring managers. It's super important to be mindful of the content you share on your social media accounts. Job seekers should really avoid posting any political comments or inflammatory messages that can potentially offend the person in charge of hiring decisions. 
You want to ensure that your social media presence is void of any content that may cause concern for potential employers or give them a negative impression of you. Having a professional online presence is really crucial for job seekers, with the majority of recruiters and hiring managers utilizing social media platforms to research and evaluate job candidates. It's important to ensure that your social media presence aligns with the professional image you're trying to present to potential employers. By presenting a consistent and polished image across all platforms, job seekers can increase their chances of securing the job of their dreams. As a recruiter, a big part of our job is to be strategic about what we share and what we don't share. Especially when dealing with clients or super talented candidates in demand, it's very important to handle them delicately with the utmost care. Also, remember this. Recruiters are human beings too. Just as everyone has personalities and little quirks, so do different recruiters. The same goes for clients, companies, hire managers, and potential hires as well. Managing personalities is a major part of this job, and whether we want to or not, keeping secrets is sometimes something that we have to accept as essential to keeping things functioning. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know down in the comments below what you think. Have you ever felt like you've been in one of those situations? If you like this video and want to see more like it, feel free to give us a like, subscribe, click that bell. It really means a lot. Feel free to also follow me as I try my best to also post the behind the scenes content daily. Thank you so much again and we'll see you on the next one.